Simplify this. So simplify. I want you to rationalize the denominator. And I want you to only use positive exponents. Or radical. by one. So that's we cleverly chose the one. We cleverly chose the one. So we're saying five over the square root of the root of the fifth. Well, I'll multiply by the square root of the three of the fifth over the square root of the root of the fifth. <coughs> Upon doing that, we knew the difference between five and
mean from the here to here? The reason is because, right, x to the 5 multiplied by x to the negative 5 halves, that is x to the 5 minus 5 halves, right, and that is x to the 10 halves, because that's 5, minus 5 halves, which is x to the 5 halves. So any question concerning these things before we move on to something significantly different? Okay, the significantly different thing is, is the following. <coughs> so let's consider. We're going to be in section 1.6, which is called the complex numbers. Which is just sort of a one-off section. We're just going to do it just a few minutes. Okay, so let's consider, for those of you that have seen uh, equations before, some of you have seen equations per before. If you haven't, that's okay because we're going to do them on Thursday. So here's an equation. 3x uh, minus 2 is equal to 0. 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. Or even I'll make it simpler. 3x is equal to 2. Right, so then probably seen this before. You can solve for x by doing what? Dividing by 3. So then x is 2 thirds. Okay, so now I have a question for you. What if, so in a sense, the solution to this equation is 2 thirds, right? 2 thirds is the x that, that works. Now what if I said, what if I said that, well, here's an equation and the x has to be an integer, then what would, what would the case be about this equation? It wouldn't have a solution. There is no integer such that 3 times that integer is 2. There's no integer. Right, the only solution is 2 thirds. That's the only one. So this equation, this equation cannot be solved over the integers. Right? There's no integer solution. There's a rational solution, 2 thirds. There's a rational solution, 2 thirds. Okay, so now let's see a, se uh, a second equation. So how about this equation? x squared is 3. Does this equation have a solution? The square root of 3, right? So x is the square root of 3 is a solution. And so is x is negative square root of 3. Now, <coughs> the square root of 3, that's not an integer. It's not an integer. It's about 1.7. It's not an integer. Okay, but even worse, even worse, it's also not rational. Right? It's not rational, meaning that, you know, you can't, you can't say it's like, you know, uh, 17 over 10. It's not 17 over 10. It's not, you know, it's not the ratio of any two integers. It's not rational. So the square root of 3 is an irrational number. So if I said that, well, I want you to solve the equation x squared is 3, but I only want a rational solution, then there'd be no solution. Right? You couldn't have a, there is no rational solution to x squared equal to 3. But there's an irrational one. There's an irrational one. Right, so then, okay, we went from the integers. Okay, we couldn't find an integer solution, so give me a rational one. And then I gave you an equation, and I said, OK, now give me a rational solution. And then you said, oh, but there is no rational solution. So we'll just deal with the irrational solution. OK, so the topic of this section is this next thing. And that is, well, what about this equation? Right, this equation doesn't have an integer solution. It doesn't have a rational solution. It doesn't have an irrational solution. But nevertheless, for various physical reasons, for example, in electricity and magnetism, when you, if you take physics, you're going to want this equation to have a solution. You're going to need this equation to have a solution. 
Okay, so in order to proceed algebraically, we have to say, okay, okay, then I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to define the solution to this equation. Okay, and it comes right here. Okay, remark. This is called the imaginary unit. So then <coughs> i, the number i, is defined to be the square root of negative 1. Okay, so now, two things is that we're going to deal with the complex numbers. When I say complex numbers, I mean we're going to deal with expressions like the square root of negative 1. Only when I'm saying, when I say in a particular question, this question involves complex numbers. Only then do you use this information. If this information, if I, if I don't say that we're dealing with complex numbers, then this information is not being used. Okay. So <coughs> that makes for some interesting things, right? So this, right? This is a fact, right? Or definition. Now let's see the consequences. Okay. So there's i. What happens if you compute i squared? It's negative 1. <laughs> That's disturbing, <coughs> right? Why is that disturbing? <laughs> yeah, because you might think if you square something, it should be positive or 0. But the imaginary unit squared is negative 1. OK. What about i cubed? not positive one. <laughs> Let's think about this. Well, I cubed, I cubed according to the rules of exponents, because if we're going to do this, this has to agree with, with every other piece of information that we have, right? We can't, we can't introduce a new, almost, yeah, we can't produce a new piece of information and it not agree with all the previous information. So if it has to agree with all previous information, then this has to be equal to I squared times I, right? I squared times I, that should be I to the 3. Now, what's i squared? It's negative 1, right? And then i. So then what is i cubed? It's negative i. i cubed is negative i. OK. <coughs> so then how about i to the 4? It'll be 1. Let's see why. Why does it have to be 1? Right. It should be i squared multiplied by i squared, right? I to the this has to agree with all of our previous information. So then it should be negative 1 multiplied by negative 1. And negative 1 multiplied by negative 1 is 1. <coughs> OK, so how about, in that case, i to the fifth? Well, according to the rules of exponents, that should be i to the fourth times i. And we know what i to the fourth is. What's i to the fourth? It's 1. We just got finished saying it's 1. So then <coughs> that should be i. OK, so let's continue until everyone sees the pattern. i to the sixth. Well, that should be i to the fifth multiplied by i. But i to the fifth was i, and then multiplied by i. So what should that be? Negative 1. OK, so now let's see. Someone should see the pattern by now. What should the answer be for i to the seventh? Negative i. So how did you come up with negative i so quickly? Exactly, right? So then notice, right, the pattern has, it repeats after every four cycles, right? I, negative 1, negative I, 1. I, negative 1, negative I, what will the next one be? 1. Okay, <coughs> good. So 
any question about the imaginary unit? The imaginary unit. Okay. So, that being said now, we can define a complex number. A complex number is <coughs> a number. that can be written as a plus bi, where a and b are called, <coughs> where a and b are real numbers. So then, the quantity A is referred to as the real part, and the quantity B is referred to as the imaginary part. The real part and the imaginary part. Okay, so then just as a, a little bit of historical, like, why is it called imaginary? Okay, the reason why, the reason why is because, <coughs> you know, before, before it became clear that, that complex numbers were going to be relevant in physics and things like that, then, you know, physicists, you know, scientists of the day, most math, math, mathematics at the very beginning was actually done by people who would be considered like physics people and science people, not mathematicians. Mathematicians didn't really exist yet. And then mathematicians started to exist, people who were doing math for its own sake. I'm just going to do this because I, li I like it, <laughs> not because I am trying to design a better wheel or whatever. I just like doing it, you know. And then they start, sol you know, they start saying, "Well, it would be interesting if there was a solution to x squared is negative one, and I'm going to call it i," you know. And then the science people are just saying, "Well, that's just mathematicians off in la la land, you know, calling it, you know, imaginary. This is just imaginariness." Right? And, th and then in response, the mathematicians say, well, okay, fine, we'll call those imaginary, and we'll call these ones real. <laughs> okay, so then, <laughs> it's fine, whatever. Okay, so then, the imaginary part and the real part. <coughs> okay, so, <coughs> for this reason, for this reason, Given a positive real number, A, the square root of negative A, the square root of negative A is, is, I times the square root of A. Okay, I times the square root of A. So, for example, okay, this can be made clear with a few examples. The square root of negative 3 is what? i times the square root of 3. Okay, the square root of negative 100 is what? 10i, right? Okay, the square root of, you know, it's difficult to be creative here. The, the difficult, uh, I mean, the square root of negative uh, 36. 6i. Right? The reason why this is the case is because, for example, what if you take 6i and you square it? Well, according to the rules of exponents, because this new thing that we're doing with i, it has to agree with all previous rules, right? This has to be 6 squared times i squared. Okay, and 6 squared, well, that's 36. And i squared, we just got finished saying, is negative 1, so this is negative 36. Okay, so the square root of negative 36 is 6i. <coughs> Great. Adding, ooh, what happened? Go away. Yes, please do. I'm not, I don't understand your question. 
So just try and rephrase it. Or ask me after class. Either is fine. Okay. <coughs> okay. So then, what about, what if I wanted to add two numbers, two complex numbers? A plus BI, right? That's a complex number. So this is a remark. A plus BI, that's a complex number, plus C plus DI. How do you add these together? How do you add them? <coughs> right, so then every complex number we said can be written as the sum of a real part plus an imaginary part i. So then what will the real part of the sum be? It will be a plus c. Right, the real part is a plus c. What is the imaginary part? b plus d. i. So it's just like adding polynomials, right? Binomials. <coughs> okay, now here's the disturbing part. <laughs> the disturbing part is, okay, well, uh, adding them seems to occur exactly like we hope. Multiplying them is uh, a different story. Right, it shouldn't be surprising to you that multiplying them turns out to be a little bit funny. Uh, because we just got finished saying that I squared is negative 1. <coughs> so the way you do this is you just FOIL it out. You FOIL it out in the way that you have always done. So then according to that, it will be AC plus ADI plus BCI and then plus BDI squared. Okay, but this is not the answer. I mean, it's correct, but this is not the answer I'm looking for. Right? We need to simplify things and collect like terms and blah, 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 blah. And then we have to have something that looks like real part plus imaginary part i. Okay, so then, <coughs> you know, according to this, I can say that well, this is a c plus. I can see that there's i here, so I can say a d plus b c i by factoring out the i. And then now b d i squared can be replaced with what? negative bd. Negative bd because i squared is negative 1. Okay, so then now this can be rewritten as ac minus bd plus ad plus bci. Right, so that was a little odd. Right, not too bad. Not too bad, but a little odd. <coughs> Okay, so then the real part is AC minus BD, and the imaginary part is AD plus BC. <coughs> okay, so let's try an example. So how about mm, this? 3 plus 2i uh, multiplied by 4 minus 5i. Please multiply this out, simplify and collect like terms. So in the interest of time, right, you just FOIL this in the same exact way that you, uh, that you ever did. And the only new piece of information that you use is that I squared is negative 1. 
Okay, so then this will be 12 uh, minus 15i plus 8i uh, minus 10i squared. Okay, so then negative 10i squared is actually positive 10. So this will be 12 uh, minus 7i plus 10. So it will be 22 minus 7i. Okay. Another question about this example. <coughs> ah, and so here's where the disturb, here's now the fully disturbing thing. This is as disturbing as it gets as far as the arithmetic of complex numbers. Is as disturbing as it gets in this class, I'll say that. Okay, so then 2, uh, let's say 2 minus 5i divided by 3 plus 4i. Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to write this as a single complex number. You need to write it as real part plus imaginary part i, not as a ratio. You need to somehow fix this, <laughs> right? Not as a ratio. Okay, so my hint to you is, is this is going to feel just like, just like something we did minutes ago. Okay, so you're going to do this. You're going to say that this is 2 minus 5i over 3 plus 4i, right? I'm just copying what it was previously, and I'm going to multiply by, what's the only thing you're going to multiply by? By 1, right? And then some of you know, know what's coming. So the, the real question is, I can multiply by 1, that's legitimate. And, and the, the thing is, is we have to know, well, what, what 1 should we multiply by? Yes, so then 2 minus 5i over 3 plus 4i, right? And then we're going to multiply by, we're going to multiply by 3 minus 4i over 3 minus 4i. Okay, so then now, notice in the denominator we had 3 plus 4i, and then now somehow out of the ether we pull 3 minus 4i. Right, so we had an expression that looks like this. It looks like this. a plus bi. And then we turned it into, what, a minus bi. Right, so then how are these two things related. I'm looking for the C word again. Conjugates. They're conjugates of each other, except now, now this is a fully formalized notion. In, in complex numbers, to denote the conjugate, it is this, right? You put a bar over it. So, for example, <coughs> to make it clear, 3 plus 4i, and then put a bar over it, what is that? 3 minus 4i, right? 3 minus 4i. So, <coughs> this, in several contexts, is, is often called the conjugate form of 1. Right? So, this is 1. This expression that we wrote is equal to 1, and it was, it was obtained by computing the conjugate. So, it is referred to as a conjugate form of 1. At any rate, when you carry out this product, lots of very fancy calculation happens. So, <coughs> so in the numerator you get what? Six minus eight i uh, minus eight i, and then minus fifteen i, and then plus twenty i squared. In the denominator you get nine plus twelve i minus twelve i minus sixteen i squared. So then simplifying the numerator, simplifying the numerator, you get 6, uh, what, minus 23i minus 20, and then divided by, now notice very nicely that you have plus 12i minus 12i, the i's go away, 
Now you have negative 16i squared, which is what? Positive 16. So this is 9 plus 16. <coughs> so then this is what? Negative 14 minus 23i over 25. And so we are almost done now with this question. Right, so then this is not quite in the form that I asked, right? It has to be in the form real part and then plus imaginary part i. So then negative 14 over 25 minus 23 over 25 i. So I could ask, what is the real part of this complex number? Negative 14 over 25. Good. What's the imaginary part? Negative 23 over 25. So let's make sure it's clear, right? The imaginary part is not negative 23 over 25i. That's not the imaginary part. The imaginary part is negative 23 over 25. It's not, you don't include the i. Okay. <coughs> that is to say that this is the real part. this, not including the i, is the imaginary part. Okay, <coughs> so division, division, quotients of complex numbers requires you using the conjugate form of one, right? It's just like, it should feel just like rationalizing a denominator. So why does it work? Let's see why it works. Okay, I want you to do the following exercise. Please compute the following. A plus bi multiplied by a minus bi. I want you to multiply this out and collect like terms. You get a squared. You get a squared minus a b i plus a b i minus b squared i squared. Okay, so you can see that the plus a the plus a b i and the minus a b i they cancel, and then b squared i squared is actually negative b squared i squared is actually positive b squared. So this is a squared plus b squared. Well, that's nice. So now this should be a slight reflection of something. This should hint you to something that we saw previously. So the thing that we saw previously was this. a squared minus b squared, right? That's one of the special, the special things that you know how to factor. How does it factor? It factors to a plus b multiplied by a minus b. And then the very next one that I said, right, I said, well, the difference of squares factors like so. How about the sum of squares? How does the sum of squares factor? It does not factor. But now we need to be a little bit more specific. It doesn't factor with real numbers. Right? It doesn't factor with real numbers. Right? So look. Look at the first line, right, the right-hand side of the, of the equation. This one, a squared plus b squared. Does it factor? Ha, it does factor. But what requi what's required for its factorization? Com complex numbers are required. Okay, now, so this, this expression does not factor. With real factors. Okay, so the truth of the matter is, is I want you to see this because I want you to know it exists. But when I ask you to factor something, it will always be over the real. Okay? It will always
always be over the limits. Okay, so any questions over <coughs> any of these things? So let's do maybe one more, and then that will be the end of the lecture for today. <coughs> try and get something that's <coughs> interesting. Okay, so let's reach let's reach way back. <laughs> we'll reach way back and do this. 3y multiplied by x minus 2 squared plus 5y to the 4 multiplied by x minus 2. And let's make this three. Let's make this three actually eight. There. I want you to factor this as completely as possible. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to change it more. Let's just erase that five. Now, it's now it'll be easy. <coughs> factor this as completely as possible. So what do you think? <coughs> yes, you can factor out a y, right? Because if you look, if you look at the expression, right, the first one has how many y's? It has one y. And the second one has how many y's? Four. So how many can you factor out? One of them, right? Because that's the smaller of the two. So the next expression has an x minus 2. But how many does it have? It has two of them. The first one has two of them. The second one has how many? One of them. So which of the two I is left? One, right? So you can factor out one y, and you can factor out one x minus 2. So then let's do that. <coughs> A y and also an x minus 2. OK, when you do that, what's left of the first term? Right, 8x minus 2, good. And then what's left of the, of the second term? y cubed, good. Okay, we'll just consider that not a factor <laughs> any further. So this, this will be done. And what time is it? Ah, so we're out of time. Wonderful. Okay, so then um, I will post the assignments soon after I get to my office. Please watch your email. There will be a quiz at the end of next class. No, over last week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Quizzes will always be over the previous week. You're taking a quiz on Thursday.